So my day job got bit by the worker shortage, and I've had a lot less time to make videos. Uh, but I found some time to answer some questions about how Rio works. Um, Rio is a rather small program by today's standards, at about 5,000 lines of code. Uh, it gets away with the small size because Rio is pretty much just the window manager. Uh, Plan 9 was graphics oriented from day one, and the kernel has graphics card drivers, and supplies files like screen, and uh, draw, and mouse. So Rio just needs to open, read, and write files to get all the access it needs for the mouse, keyboard, and monitor. Um, after that, its job is to multiplex these and keep track of which window the mouse is in, um, which window has focus um, for mouse and keyboard input, and like all things Plan 9, Rio um, also has a file system. So normally you find that under mount, Oops, change directory mount. Um, um, and so you can see here it makes, you know, console, label, window, window control, all those sort of things. Um, and that's the basic principles behind uh, what it does. Um, and that isn't all that different from other desktops, really. The big difference is the Plan 9 style of doing everything with files. Uh, the other part of Rio is the why part. Why does it look and behave the way it does uh, beyond the standard things like Windows and a mouse cursor? Um, Part of it is just that the style of the time it was originally developed in. Um, you can go find screenshots of classic Mac OS or CDE on X11 in the 90s. Um, things outside the programs being run were pretty minimal. Uh, the developers at Bell Labs also liked the minimal environment. Rio just presents you with an empty gray space to sweep out windows in um, and then gets out of your way. Um, and the muted color scheme was inspired by research into human visual perception and how it evolved and behaved. Um, so the colors are all muted like those found in nature. Um, and there was uh, an effort to you know, make Rio something that did not overwork the eyes or take attention away from whatever work was being done. So let's look under the hood to see uh, what Rio is doing. Um, first off, is rio.c. So this one will have your main function in it. Um, an interesting thing to note is that it checks to see if the name of the program, you know, being run, you know, so that's the, uh, you know, arg value zero there will be, you know, the actual file name for the program being run. If it has a dot out in it, like six dot out, if this was an unnamed executable from the um, AMD64 compiler, um, if that's the case, it adds an exit option to the third button menu in Rio. So an exit will appear down there. So if you're actually, you know, making your own modified versions of uh, Rio and you just run it as, you know, six dot out, um, it'll have an exit option to bail out if it's broken or something. Um, so many of these other C files handle other aspects of uh, the system. So, you know, this one here, this FSYS um, has all the stuff for setting up the file system part of Rio. Um, you know, the wind and wind control and all that. Um, you know, will handle what actually goes on in those files. So a big chunk of this is actually just the, you know, presenting everything as files and sort of having the functions for what those files do if they're read or written to. Um, but the thing that most people would probably be interested in is the data.c. So data.c has the stuff for what the mouse pointers look like. And it also has, down here in icon init, 
um, setting the background color and the colors for all the text, the backgrounds of the windows, um, the borders, all that sort of stuff. So that's all found in this icon init function inside data.c. Um, something to note is that Rio does not set the colors of this, you know, button three and button two menus. Um, that's actually part of another library. And that's why you see the same style menu in other programs. So none of that's found inside Rio. Um, that's handled elsewhere. So I made myself a slightly modified version of Rio. And uh, I'll go ahead and fire that up now. So in this case, I have it set up as the default graphics interface for my grid's uh, basic user account. And right away you can see I have a wallpaper. Um, next thing you might notice is that the uh, some of the colors here are different too. Um, so yeah, let's see how I did this. So I've dubbed my new Rio replacement uh, Neo. Go back to my oops, data.c. Make some room here. All right. So this block of code here, I borrowed from uh, Divine Lulin Vega. So I also borrowed some of his code for uh, one of the things I was doing with the whiz light bulbs too. And I'll have a, a link in the video description uh, on where I got this. Um, but basically what it does is it uh, checks the user's directory for a file called wallpaper, um, loads it up into this B image, um, and then basically just tiles it all over the background. And if it doesn't find anything, it falls through to this function here, which is what Rio does by default, is just make us this kind of gray background. Um, keep in mind, this does not directly read JPEG files. It only knows the raw Plan 9 image format. Um, Plan 9 comes with tools for converting various image files, so you can grab a JPEG or PNG, um, convert it, and then have Rio read it. Um, if you wanted to do this, but sexier, um, I would make a file system with a wallpaper file and make it so that you could write a JPEG into it. Um, it'll do the conversion, um, stores it in memory, and when read, it'll read back the raw Plan 9 format of that image. Um, and then down below here is all the settings for the colors for text, background, highlights, border colors. Um, I added comments here for which one does what. And I decided to go with a 1970s theme. So I made my own little, um, little macros here. There we go. I got, you know, my avocado, uh, you know, my burnt orange, um, that sort of stuff and then just put in the hex codes for the colors. So um, another thing to note is that these only apply to the stuff Rio handles. Any other program can set the text or background color to whatever it wants. So these things will just do, you know, the background and text colors inside Rio. So that'll make a white background, black text, 
Um, highlights will be in Harvest Gold um, when the window's out of focus. Oops, you can kind of see the uh, text goes from black to this kind of brown color called Quincy. Except for the highlighted text still says black. You know, I changed my scroll bars to avocado. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much all there is to it. So if you want to modify Rio, there's not a lot to modify, and that's by design. Uh, the designers wanted minimal in an era that was already noted for its minimalism. Um, however, is isn't that hard to add functionality. Um, and since uh, it kind of sticks with that Unix notion of small programs um, being piped together, um, you can add programs. Um, and people have made things that act like a, a launcher or status bar. Um, you probably noticed, like, you know, I have mine scripted so that, like, win watch and stats always oops, turn on um, by default. And so I just always have that. Um, didn't really need to modify or add that to Rio. You just run a separate program to add that sort of stuff. Um, some final thoughts for anyone interested in doing a full-on Rio replacement. Um, if you like tiling window managers, um, you can just run Acme instead of Rio at startup. So, let's get Rio. There we go. Um, So like you can run like a terminal inside a um, inside an Acme um, window. And so yeah, you can, instead of running Rio, you just run Acme at startup and you get Acme taking the whole screen and you can have windows. The downside is, is that it won't run graphics inside. So it doesn't have the ability to do that. Um, you know, but if you could modify Acme to do that, you know, talk to the draw device basically, um, you'd have a full on real replacement as a tiling window manager. Um, as far as um, something more modern that uses, you know, modern graphics card features, uh, good luck with that. You can go read up on all the effort the Linux people have had to deal with getting 3D stuff working. Um, in short, it means not only going down to the kernel to get the drivers to do this, but then coming up with an abstraction to replace the draw device and libraries to go with it. Um, that's probably a project worthy of calling the results Plan 9 5th Edition. Um, if, however, you're fine with just basic 2D frame buffer stuff, um, check out LibDraw. Um, the draw device was designed to make graphics stuff minimal enough to do over the network and the library has a pretty decent set of features um, and since Rio itself um, does not take you know direct control of the graphics device you can of course do things like run Rio inside of Rio um, and, you know, that means you could test out any Rio replacement inside of Rio, as long as you're still just using those same sort of, uh, you know, the libdraw libraries and the draw device. So, anyway, um, best of luck with your projects. If you come up with something cool, let me know. I'll try to do a video about it. And, as always, have fun.